Have you ever had a nervous breakdown when your PC started to behave erratically at the brink of summer? It had almost happened to me, but managed to quickly replace a broken fan and now my computer works like clockwork again. Have you ever smelled burning electronics and you thought it was from the neighbors, but in fact it was your computer? Many think that mini PCs with passive cooling never overheat, if not overclocked. What about watching IPTV and movies in full HD quality in hot summer months? Can you diagnose forthcoming failure before it happens and fix or even improve your PC's cooling system? Now, let's discuss small computers' cooling options. Passive cooling without a cooler requires big enough chips surfaces and a big enough casing to dissipate all the computer excessive heat. Raspberry Pi 3 in this regard works even without a cooling system. However, it may quickly overheat if running at 100% load for a longer period. Raspberry 4 has a much smaller processor chip which runs at higher frequencies and can work without a cooler. Intel and AMD architecture mini PCs have higher levels of integration and run at even higher frequencies, so they can not run without at least a passive cooling system. Now, we are going to make an active cooling system for Raspberry Pi 3. The processor chip is here and it has no aluminum or copper cooling ribs. It may not need them as the room temperature does not exceed 20 degrees Celsius and the processor load is under 50%. But summer temperatures may quickly reach 30 degrees Celsius and even more without an air conditioner. I could have gone to an electronics shop, bought a new small sized 5 volt ventilator, drilled a hole in the Raspberry Pi 3 housing, screwed the ventilator on and connected it to Raspberry Pi's extension connector but I rather scavenged an oversized 12 volt ventilator from a broken PC that also runs on 5 volts. Connecting to the Raspberry Pi's extension connector is really easy. You just skip the first pin from the right and connect it to the second and the third pin. Let's test it. Let's power it, now. The ventilator is turning quickly enough to make a pleasant breeze, but still remain silent, which is enough to very effectively call Raspberry Pi 3. Next, let's close the casing. I removed the cover from a small casing opening, just enough to get cool air in and hot air out though the connector opening. Raspberry Pi 4 is a little bit different it has a smaller processor chip, which definitely needs at least a small cooling rib, but it is not enough. A small 5 volt ventilator is also needed to drive the air through it. Is there also an option for an efficient passive cooling? Yes, but it also comes with a drawback. Full aluminium casing is perfect for driving away the excessive heat, being even more efficient in many cases than active ventilator cooling, unfortunately it also blocks Wi-Fi and Bluetooth signals. However, if you are going to use a wired Ethernet connection, it is more than prefect. You can also observe tower-like blocks of aluminium almost touching each of the crucial Raspberry Pi UB chips. There are also heat conducting paddings in an enclosed plastic bag to provide an excellent thermal contact with all the chips and provide electrical insulation at the same time. The assembled Raspberry Pi looks like this. The next project I have done is a mini PC cooling system enhancement. First, I had to disassemble the PC's plastic casing. The screws go through holes indicated by arrows. As we may see, the PC use passive cooling with a standard cooling rib attached to the processor and an aluminum plate attached on it at the top through a thermal conductive padding in the middle. I therefore decided enhance the PAUSE mini PC's cooling by adding a used Pentium for cooler with copper core and aluminum mantle despite knowing that I would certainly lose warranty. First, I drilled two holes through the aluminum plate, as indicated by two black dots to be able to drive through two screws that would hold the additional cooler. Next, I had to cut an opening in the upper PC casing for the cooler to be able to protrude through. The new cooling system extension nevertheless looks aesthetical and is also electrically insulated from the rest of the computer. I could have also used the original Pentium for ventilator on top of the added cooling rib, but there is no need for that since the cooling surface is now s number of times bigger and also open to the open air. Thank you for watching. Please smash like and subscribe buttons if you liked the video.